College students, listen up. If you're looking for money to go to school, stay tuned because we're going to tell you where you can get it from. That's coming up next on Community Uplift. Hello, I'm Denise Roberts and welcome to Community Uplift. Well, it is 2017 and if you need some money to help with college tuition, you're in the right place. Once you've figured out your major and what kind of degree you want to pursue, the next big question is how to pay for it. While higher education costs can seem astronomical, the good news is there are lots of options available to help you finance your academic pursuits. Today we have not one but two community service organizations where education and scholarship are a top priority. Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated and my sorority, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Joining me today to talk about scholarship programs for college students are Tony Lee, the Basilisk of the Gamma Pi Qs, Willie Hines, Chairman of Gamma Pi's Project Enrich Program, Marion Massey, Chairman of Gamma Pi's Charles Drew Memorial Scholarship Fund, Terry Gordine, Scholarship Committee Chairman for Gamma Pi, and Millicent Hawkins, President of the Fort Washington Alumni Chapter for Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. And first up is Tony Lee, the current President of the Prince George's County Chapter of Omega Psi Phi, Gamma Pi, and Willie Hines, who heads up their Project Enrich program. Welcome back to the show, both of you. Thank you. Thank Hello, you. Denise. How are you doing? So why don't you talk about um, how important scholarship is to Omega Sci Fi? Our founders uh, recognize the importance of intellect. And so scholarship is the for, for, foremost uh, of our fraternity's cardinal principles. Mm -hmm. And uh, how does Gamma Pi carry out that scholarship mandate? Well, scholarship is an integral part of uh, Gamma Pi's mm -hmm. chapter, mm -hmm. and one of the primary ways that we carry out our scholarship programming is through our two foundations. Mm -hmm. uh, and we raise funds through various events and activities mm -hmm. to award scholarships to those deserving students. And how much money does the chapter give out in scholarships every year? We give out roughly about $25,000 a year in scholarship money. Okay, okay. Um, Willie, let's talk about Project Enrich, and we talked about it before. Talk, tell us what Project Enrich is. College, uh, Project Enrich is a college preparatory program for high school students, mm -hmm. which started in Prince George's County. Mm -hmm. We have expanded that. We have kids right now in Anne Arundel, Calvert County, Howard County, Charles County, the District of Columbia, Montgomery mm -hmm. County, as mm -hmm. well as Prince George's County. Project Enrich is a program that was uh, designed to help African American students mm -hmm. because we were upper rep we were African American students were not properly represented when it came to advanced placement courses. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we wanted to do was prepare kids for college. Now what have we done? We have a program that's designed to challenge the kids to become more aware of college preparation. And, and that is through college fairs, we do that through college tours, and we do that by lectures, mm -hmm. bringing people in to talk about financial aid, uh, we write essays, uh, so we do a number of things to try to uh, bring out awareness for our young people. And what are some of the critical skills that the students are learning through the program? Uh, one of the things that's big for us is communication. Mm -hmm. All our students are required to de uh, develop a 30 second elevator speech, mm -hmm. which basically a gives them the opportunity to say who they are, what they are, what they're about, and what their goals are. Mm -hmm. All the students there are tasked to develop a college timeline. Mm -hmm. And that college timeline is a plan of action and milestones, which basically states when standardized tests have to be done, mm -hmm. college tours have to be done, mm -hmm. and college fairs have to be done. Mm -hmm. We also have the kids write essays. Mm -hmm. 
And as a result of writing the essays, we have an essay contest in which the kids also have to get up and do uh, oral presentations. So we're here to talk about scholarships. Does the Project Enrich program help students meet the financial needs when it comes to college? Uh, we're doing a, I think we're doing a very outstanding job of that. For example, mm -hmm. uh, of our graduating class from last year, five of the six kids all got financial aid. Okay. Two of the kids got full rides. One got a full scholarship to the University of Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Another one was a Posse Award winner that went to the University of Wisconsin at Madison. Mm -hmm. uh, we also had a young lady who uh, was short of funding. But public speaking is one of the things we do. Mm -hmm. It's very important for our kids to sell themselves. Mm -hmm. So we had a young lady that actually went to Alabama State, mm -hmm. met with the president, and after talking to the president, she was awarded $16,000 in financial aid. Mm -hmm. So we really are working to bring about a greater awareness. Recently, the Alfred Street Baptist Church had their annual uh, uh, career fair. Mm -hmm. And uh, we uh, received several calls from parents who on the spot, their students were able to not only get admissions, but money. Mm -hmm. So it's all about awareness. Okay, okay. Um, Tony, for those who are not aware, it's a requirement for your chapter to, in order to join your chapter, you have to be, you have to have a college degree, right? That is absolutely correct. Is that an indicator of how important education is to our young people today? Absolutely. Scholarship is vital. Uh -huh. uh, it's our second cardinal principle uh -huh. and we are very, very interested in making sure that our young men uh, not only attain higher education and degrees, uh -huh. but we want to encourage uh, master degrees, uh -huh. doctorate degrees. Uh -huh. We have quite a few members who uh, have uh, acquired those degrees. Okay. Um, what about some of the great scholars in, in Omega Sci-Fi? Oh, we're loaded with scholars. I'm sure you oh, are. Oh, yes, we are. You want me to name a few? <laughs> yes, I uh, do. Dr. Ernest Edward Jess, <laughs> uh, Benjamin Mays, Carter G. Woodson, Professor Frank Coleman, just to name a few, Colonel Charles Young, uh, Ronald McNair, mm -hmm. uh, Charles Drew. Mm -hmm. We have quite a few members who are very prominent in the educational field. Outstanding, outstanding. And who are some great scholars in your chapter? In Gamma Pi chapter? Yes. Well, we have uh, quite a few doctors, quite a few lawyers, uh, quite a few uh, educators. Uh, Dr. Uh, Burnham, Mickey Burnham from uh, Bowie State University mm -hmm. is a member of our chapter. Dr. Mm -hmm. Luther Burst, former president of uh, Fort Valley State and Chain University mm -hmm. is a member of our chapter. Uh, Dr. Uh, Wayman J. Brown, uh, Dr. Ed Chappelle, Dr. Kevin Ford Sr., mm -hmm. Dr. Harrison Foy. We have quite a few, we have a few attorneys mm -hmm. in our chapter who uh, have exce ex excelled mm -hmm. uh, academically. Uh, Dr. Uh, Brother Jeff Bryson is one, Brother Jay Crump is one. So we have quite a few brothers. Okay. Uh, we have educators, mm -hmm. uh, Don Herring Sr., mm -hmm. uh, Gordon Sampson. We, we have quite a few and brothers. And we've got some leaders in the county as well. Absolutely, right? our county executive is. Uh, okay. Brother Rasharon Baker is also a member okay, uh, of okay. our chapter. All right. Um, Willie, what uh, percentage of the students that participate in Project Enrich actually go to college? Uh, we've had 100%. 100%. I've been the director for the last uh, five years, and 100% uh, who have graduated from Project Enrich have all gone on to college. Mm -hmm. And um, the last two years, of the 12 students who graduated, 11 of them received financial aid actually to go to school. So they actually got scholarship money, which is uh, all about using other people's money. I would like to say this, Project Enrich is uh, conducted at Bowie State University mm -hmm. because we believe that if you want kids to aspire to go to college, it's very good for Project Enrich to be conducted mm -hmm. on uh, a college uh, university. Okay. So we have that working uh, for us. Plus. Uh, we use the professional network of the men of Omega Psi Phi. Mm -hmm. uh, Brother Boss has just basically stated uh, the list of leaders and scholars that we have. Mm -hmm. So Project Enrich is basically designed where each grade level has a team lead, okay. which is a mentor. Okay. And all of those are members of Gamma Pi chapter. Okay. So they serve as mentors as well as tutors for young people. They stay with them until they matriculate out of the program. Mm -hmm. So we use our professional network. For example, we have Dr. Harrison Foy, mm -hmm. graduate of Tennessee State University, mm -hmm. and over the last two years, we've had four students uh, who got full rise to Tennessee State University, wow. which was a result of Dr. Uh -huh. Harrison Foy working with those students as well as working with Tennessee State. Oh. So a big part of what we do is we use our professional network mm -hmm. uh, to help our students. Okay. Um, where can students 
or how can students find out more about the Project Enrich program? Well, one of the things they can do is they can go to www.projectenrich.org. Okay. And once they go to that particular network, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of information there. The kids can register there, mm -hmm. but they can find out a lot of details about the program itself. Okay. And uh, what are some of the colleges that, you know, some of the students are attending that have come through the program? You know, we have kids right now at University of Texas. We have kids at Hampton. We have kids at A&T. We have kids at Tuskegee. Okay. We have kids at University of Miami. Mm -hmm. We have kids at uh, University of Wisconsin, as well as uh, University of Connecticut. Okay, and we'll leave it right there. Tony Lee and Willie Hines, Prince George's County Chapter of Omega Psi Phi. Thank you for being here again. It is our pleasure. Don't Thank go you. away, because we will be back with more information on how you can find scholarships. It's important for young people to have a mentor. A mentor could be a regular, everyday person. It's just somebody there to help the child. Knowing that an influence in Chad makes me feel great. By having a mentor, he has someone to bounce ideas off of. He has someone to also challenge him and help him see a vision for the future. What you'll get out of it is just the satisfaction of knowing that you've helped somebody. Mentoring works. Become a mentor. Welcome back and thank you for tuning in with us on Community Uplift. Here to talk more about scholarships from Gamma Pi are Marion Massey of Gamma Pi's Charles Drew Memorial Scholarship Fund and Terry Gordon, the scholarship committee chairman. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. So it seems like the chapter, your chapter, has a huge commitment to scholarships through the Charles Drew Fund. Can you talk about the fund and how it works? Well, the fund was uh, incorporated in the 1980s, late 1980s, and uh, our whole idea was to increase our scholarship funds. Uh, we basically run programs, uh, fundraisers, and uh, we've been able to increase our scholarship to the neighborhood of $25,000 a year, mm -hmm. and we've done that for the past probably 15 years. Okay, yeah. and, and how much of the scholarship funds um, go to, how much of the how much of the chapter's scholarships um, actually go come from the fund? Uh, we do a uh, sixty percent of that okay. from the fund. Okay. The uh, chapter also uh, contribute the other forty percent. Okay. Yeah. Um, Terry, if a student is looking for scholarships, what is the first step that they need to take in, to connect with your organization? Uh, we have a website, as mentioned earlier, www.gammapi.org. Mm -hmm. um, you will find a plethora of information there. Mm -hmm. That site will allow, allow kids to go out and look at the scholarship opportunities mm -hmm. where the information and the application resides, mm -hmm. as well as uh, we are reaching out to the counselors and all the schools in Prince George County, mm -hmm. as well as uh, other initiatives that we are trying to get these kids um, access to scholarship funds. And um, Mr. Massey, how are the scholarships funds actually raised? Well, uh, golf tournament, we've had the golf tournament now for 13 years. Mm -hmm. This is our 13th year. Mm -hmm. uh, we're a member of the Combined Federal Campaign. Uh, as I said before, Gamma Pi makes a contribution. Mm -hmm. uh, we've gotten grants from the county. Mm -hmm. uh, we've gotten grants from other sources. Mm -hmm. So we just look for any way possible to get some extra money. Mm -hmm. uh, our whole aim here is to provide additional funds for these kids. Okay. And do your programs, or do all of the programs, collaborate with one another? Yes. The unique thing about our organization, the way that this has been designed, is that you heard earlier about Project Enrich. Yes. Well, Charles Drew is a very integral part of what we do. Mm -hmm. So part of my goal is to reach out to Charles Drew as well as Project Enrich mm -hmm. and see these students that are excelling. Mm -hmm and to make sure that these funds and those opportunities are there for them mm -hmm. so that they can uh, apply for these scholarships mm -hmm. so that making their um, course load mm -hmm. into college a more doable thing uh, for future use. Okay, and how are you getting the word out? Currently, we're using our website. Mm -hmm. We're looking at uh, the counselors going into the school. Mm -hmm. A part of what I'm, what I'm proposing to do now is for uh, the scholarship committee to physically go to the schools in Prince George County. Mm -hmm 
reach out to the counselors, find you know, where these at-risk students are, touch bases with them to get an understanding what their goals are, how they're trying uh, to, to proceed in life, and figure out what can we do to, to grow this program so that these kids have access to money, scholarship, and mentorship. Okay. Um, do you see college debt as a huge problem for African Americans? Absolutely. <laughs> um, uh, yes. Uh, it, it's reached a point that the cost of scholarship is out of the reach of the average, mm -hmm. the average family. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and borrowing money is, again, a big burden on the student once they get out of school. Right. So, yes, it is a problem. And do you see your organization as helping to uh, find a way to, to combat that problem? So in any program, in any project, there is always room for improvement. Mm -hmm. So what I'm looking at under the scholarship piece of this mm -hmm. is how do we take what we have and what has worked flawlessly for the last number of years? Mm -hmm. How do you build on that? Mm -hmm. Well, the 25000 about dollars that we give under scholarships each year, the goal is to grow that because the cost of uh, education and, and college itself, mm -hmm. it's steady going up. Mm -hmm and continuously giving you know, 11, 12, 13 students X number of dollars mm -hmm. is not combating the problem. Mm -hmm. So we have to do more. We ha we've got to figure out how can we raise more money so mm -hmm. that we can actually affect change in our communities, mm -hmm. and that's our goal. Um, do scholarships, do your scholarships support uh, HBCU programs, or does it, meaning do the students only have to, I mean, are they only, are you only supporting HBCU attendance, or can they go to any college? Any college. The goal here, the end goal is to provide these kids with access. Okay. As, as we know, mm -hmm. in this world that we live in, the change in technologies, mm -hmm. uh, the vast amount of education that's out here, mm -hmm. it's not only for HBCUs, but any institute of higher learning that give these kids opportunities to reach their goal and excel in education, that's our end goal. Mm -hmm. I'd like to add to that. Okay. Uh, most of the older guys in the chapter, older brothers, went to HBCUs. Okay. So we're always glad to see the student going to an HBCU. Sure. But uh, at the same time, wherever they go, we're supporting them. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of students uh, may not even realize that um, getting scholarships is one thing, but keeping them is something different. What are the requirements for scholarships with, through your programs? We have a follow-on scholarship. Our scholarship is given year by year. Mm -hmm. So in order to get extra money for following years, mm -hmm. you have to reapply. Mm -hmm. And we maintain that the student must have a 3.0 average to apply. Mm -hmm. And these are first-year students, right? No, no. second-year students, second through fourth. Okay. You, you can get the scholarship for the first year out of high school okay. and then reapply for it the next three years. Okay. Okay, all right. Are you finding it hard to attract students to the scholarship programs, to find students to actually apply? So yes, mm -hmm. part, part of what we're finding out is that especially young black mm -hmm. men mm -hmm. are not succeeding or even attempting to attain higher education. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that has a lot to do with the systematic things that are put in place. So it is our job, job here at Gamma Pi to reach those young men mm -hmm. and let them know that they have mentors mentors as well as that they have people that's backing them mm -hmm. and it's our job to go out and provide a way for them. Mm -hmm. So through Project Enrich that's mm -hmm. reaching out and making sure that these young men have access and opportunities, mm -hmm. it's my job to provide them with scholarship funds to get them to the end goal. How are you tracking the success of the students that actually receive scholarships? Uh, we actually haven't done a good job of that, I'm sorry to say. Okay. Um, we know of some students who reapply for the uh, continuing scholarship, mm -hmm. second, third, fourth year, but on the whole, we have not tracked them as we should have, mm -hmm. uh, and we, we need to improve in that area. So to add to that, mm -hmm. or, or to put a caveat here, mm -hmm. um, I recently had a, a long, in-depth conversation with our bossless, and we had, we spoke about this very incident. Mm -hmm. So my goal is to put in place a robust repeatable process that's going to take these kids from inception to graduation. Mm -hmm. And that means tracking their success. Mm -hmm. That means mentoring them throughout the entire program in their four or five years, whatever that is in school. Mm -hmm. 
um, we have to do a better job, but it begins with us. Yes, yeah, that's very, it's very important to make sure they get to the finish line, my goodness, you know. Um, to start is one thing, but it's difficult. It can be difficult for um, students to continue and stay, that, stay on that path. Um, the Charles Drew Fund is named after a very important fraternity member for you, right? It is, okay. yes. Uh, Dr. Charles R. Drew. Uh, I guess his most notable co uh, contribution has been the blood bank. Uh, he was very instrumental mm -hmm. in establishing the process by which blood is stored. Mm -hmm. uh, he was an educator. Mm -hmm. He taught at Howard and at uh, Morgan State. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was a physician and a surgeon. So, yes, he was very accomplished. All right. Well, we're going to leave it right there. I want to thank you guys for coming on the show again. So, um, thank you. And you, hopefully you'll be able to come back again and talk about some of the successes of those students. Thank you for having me. Okay, you. all right, great. Scholarships, scholarships, and more scholarships when we come back. Most of my family, they never graduated high school or even let alone go to college, so I'm trying to break that barrier. Every day after work, went straight to school, studied hard, and, and it paid off. I could not have done it alone. I see the future is really bright for me. The high school diploma is just added to the confidence, and now I feel unstoppable. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Welcome back to Community Uplift. Joining me now is Millicent Hawkins, president of the Fort Washington Alumni Chapter for Delta Sigma Theta Sorority. Thank you so much for Thank being here. Thank you so here. much for having us here. We're, we're very honored that you invited us to come. Thank of you course, so much. Of course, of course. How, you know, why does scholarship mean so much to Delta? Um, scholarship is part of our, one of our five th major thrusts of the organization. Mm -hmm. So the scholarship becomes part of our educational thrust mm -hmm. that we use and combine with our programs that we have for our young people. Mm -hmm. um, the Dr. Betty Shabazz uh, Delta Academy, the GEMS program, and the Embody for our young males mm -hmm. along with the scholarship become the components of the major educational thrust that, that Delta as a national organization has and we we in the chapters perform and provide that service to our local communities. Now, um, were those some of the scholarship initiatives that those, you just those, mentioned? Those are programs, those are educational programs okay. mm -hmm. that we have that leads to training programs okay. um, for our young people who are a part of the community. So the GEMS program is for high school young ladies mm -hmm. and the academy is for high school middle schoolers mm -hmm. and the Embody is for middle school boys. Okay, and what are some of the scholarship initiatives that you have? So the scholarship initiatives, the Fort Washington Alumni Chapter, mm -hmm. um, we were chartered 28 years ago. Mm -hmm. So we service um, Southern Prince George's County and Charles County. Mm -hmm. And in that initiatives for the last 28 years, we've provided scholarships to the students who live in our service area. And we average um, about $20,000 of scholarship, $20,000 per year mm -hmm. to those students who, first time um, students, um, high school graduate students who live in our service area and who apply for the scholarships. Okay. You know, I just remember my first year of college, tuition was $8,000, and that included tuition, room, board. Yeah. And it is, you can't find that no. anywhere no. today. Do you see um, your scholarship programs as helping to fill the gap for um, African American communities? I think our program, along with programs for organizations like Gamma Pi, mm -hmm. fill that gap mm -hmm. because we recognize that there are some students who may not be able to afford college mm -hmm. with if we were not filling that gap. Okay. $20,000 um, from this chapter and $20,000 from various other organizations in the community mm -hmm fill a gap that probably would not be there, mm -hmm. it would be a larger gap and less students may potentially not be able to attend college. Okay. So I think we all, we all are helping to fill that mm -hmm. gap um, for our students in the community. And we were just talking about how much of a burden or cumbersome it can be yes. just trying to find ways to fund education. What's your take on that? I think the process 
has become quite burdensome mm -hmm. because the college application process mm -hmm. can be overwhelming mm -hmm. and challenging, especially for first-time students and their parents mm -hmm. who may not know the questions to answer mm -hmm. or their resources available to add the scholarship process of trying to find scholarships and the appropriate method to apply whether the essay is good enough, mm -hmm. that it, is it is the right words being used. Mm -hmm. It can be a challenge that not everyone um, can overtake mm -hmm. or have the resources to assist in the process. And how do your scholarship programs um, connect to the sorority's priorities? So the sorority's priority is scholarship is is in the education component is a major component. Mm -hmm. So our scholarship is um, one of the ways that we continue to give back to our community. Mm -hmm. Our scholarship is for um, young men and young women mm -hmm. um, who attend or live, um, attend one of the schools in our service area mm -hmm. or live in our service area, okay. and it's for first time um, students going to college. What are some of the requirements? Uh, some, some other requirements. So the requirements is a 2.75 GPA based okay. on that second quarter. Mm -hmm. They provide an essay mm -hmm. um, basically taking a topic of international or local newsworthy and write how it is affecting their view of society. Mm -hmm. um, a letter of recommendation from the school counselor or teacher mm -hmm. and a letter from a community uh, resource that they have been providing at least 15 hours of community service. Okay. Um, that is the information that's required for the scholarship application. Okay. Now you have a very important youth program coming up next month, right? Yes, we do. Okay. We have um, our eighth annual youth summit mm -hmm. that is that will take place on Saturday, March the 11th okay. at Suitland High School. It is open to middle schooler and high school students, mm -hmm. and um, the theme of the of the event. Oops, I'm sorry. The theme of the event is um, No More Hurt series okay. with the theme of empowering youth to lead by developing character, confidence, and social awareness. Oh, and we encourage all high school and middle school students to apply. Mm -hmm. It's free mm -hmm. um, and the information is available on our website. Do you track the success of your scholarship students or the, 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 the students that actually receive scholarships? We, ha here? we have attempted to do that. Mm -hmm. That's not always very easy to do because mm -hmm. sometimes we lose track. Sure. But we're beginning to develop a process to track our students. We do get re we do get correspondence back from the parent mm -hmm. and the student mm -hmm. to uh, tell us their progress and their success. Mm -hmm. So that's normally how we get that information regarding um, our students for who receive scholarships. Do you find that the students that um, receive scholarships from you for the first time return back and try to get more, you know, the next year? Right now, our scholarships is only for first-time students, okay. those who are high school graduating seniors. Okay. So we don't, right now, have a recurring scholarship. Okay. okay. And um, just for more information and so people know where to go, um, how does someone find out about your um, all this information regarding all of our programs are on our website, mm -hmm. www.dstfwac.org. All right, great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much this for having me. This has been us. great talking to you. Great. Thank yeah. you. And we're out of time, but I want to say thank you again to all of our guests today. Tony Lee, Willie Hines, Marion Massey, Terry Gordon, and Millicent Hawkins. And that is our show for today. Thank you for tuning in to Community Uplift. For more information about the show or the Gamma Pi Qs and how you too can get involved, go to www.gammapi.org. Gamma Pi is also on Twitter at Gamma Pi Qs and on Facebook at Gamma Pi Chapter. Oh, and the YouTube chapter is Gamma Pi Chapter.